Assessing both usual and fast walking speed is a really good idea. So when we talked about acceleration needs to be outside of the walking path, then think about doing fast walking speed versus self-selected walking speed. If I'm gonna try to get somebody's steady state fast walking speed, I'm gonna need to give them a little bit more distance to accelerate. So for instance, if I was gonna do a five meter walking test and time that, I may give somebody an accelerated acceleration distance of two and a half meters to get going, time the middle five meters, and then give them the other two and a half meters to finish it up. So I needed a 10 meter path in order to do my five meter test. If I'm gonna do a fast gait speed, it's suggested that we allow three or 3.25 um, uh, meters of distance to allow somebody to accelerate to their steady state fast gait speed. When we talk about doing a fast walking speed, that really is gonna give us a more comprehensive picture of the patient's abilities. And it might tell us a little bit more about that patient's functional reserve, right? We wanna know, we talked recently about our patients working at uh, close to capacity. And if a patient is working close to capacity, when we ask them to speed up, they're not gonna have a lot to speed up. So if somebody is walking and their self-selected gait speed uh, is 0.8 meters per second, and then we ask them to walk as quickly as they can, and their fast uh, walking speed is 0.85 meters per second, there's a serious problem there. This person is may, may be functioning so close to their uh, reserve that they really just don't have any more in them. So it's important, it can give us some insights when we ask somebody to speed up and show us what they can do. Mm -hmm.